G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be looking at part two of a three-part workflow that I've started in part four, um, where we're looking at converting area and area boundary lines from a room using Revit API. So in this one, we're going to focus on generating area bounding lines or area separation lines, as they're called in Revit, um, using the boundary of rooms or curves that come from rooms. So this is part of a series that I recommend you sort of track back and follow if you've just found this video first. Um, but today we're looking at creating area lines using API um, in Dynamo. So this video is going to, we're going to navigate the Revit API docs as we usually do. Um, we're going to look at how to generate the Dynamo curves um, into Revit curves. Uh, so we're going to be using a to Revit type method in this case. Um, and then we're going to be creating Revit elements themselves, so the actual area lines. But then we're going to pass them through the Dynamo node as Dynamo elements so we can do more things to them if we want. So let's just get straight in. So um, we're gonna be looking at part two, so area lines from boundaries. But if you go back to part one, I've shown you how you can already generate room boundaries from uh, Revit rooms. So we're gonna be using those respective boundary curves in Dynamo to generate the area lines. So you will need that uh, first part. So we need to use the new area boundary line method. Um, and this is part of the Revit creation namespace for the document class in that namespace. So we're actually gonna be saying doc create, and then we're gonna use the new area boundary line. And you can see we've got a, a, a new abstract element we haven't seen before um, in the API, which is a sketch plan, which is essentially like a work plane in Revit. It tells elements um, which plane in the Revit environment an element should be placed on. So if we look further into the sketch plane class, we can see we can use a sketch plane create method in this case. Um, so we're gonna be needing two things. We'll need the document, which we know how to get. And we also need to get the ID of a level in this case, or a datum. So we're gonna use level as our datum. So we'll be using the dot ID property of the level um, because it belongs to the element namespace. And this will allow us to create a sketch plane at that level to place our lines on. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck straight into it. Let's go past that one, one screen too many. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is getting all my rooms from level one in the Revit basic sample project using Archilab to get those rooms and then generating their room boundaries as curves. So these are essentially the lines that we're gonna use in order to generate our area lines. Now it doesn't matter um, which room the area lines belong to. All that matters is we're generating the lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just flatten all these lines so that we just get a whole bunch of curves. So this will just give us one big list. And this means we can just iterate over this list. So it's important not to try to make your Python scripts do too much. Um, so to try to flatten a list in Python is like much harder than flattening a list just here instead. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna work with all these lines at the same level. Okay, so I'll just make a little Python script to get started. And this will be my starter template. We need two inputs in this case. We need the document and we need the curves as well. Um, so in this case, we're going to take uh, the, actually no, the curves. And then we're going to take the levels, sorry, not the document. So we're going to get the levels because we're going to take level one in this case. We could also just go all the way back to the start and just connect up this same level because we're gonna be creating them on the sketch plane of that level. So input one is our curves from Dynamo and input two is going to be our level. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna keep all my namespace references um, like I usually do just to keep things easier, but I'll just clean up a couple. So I'll just take out the UI because we don't need that. And we do need the transaction manager in this script actually. So that's quite important. Um, you'll need Revit services to get the transaction manager and Revit nodes, uh, but we don't need proto geometry or any of these system paths. So we'll just work with these. We only need the document or the active document. So document manager dot instance dot current DB document, which we're going to set to the variable doc. Okay. So let's collect our inputs at the start. So the first thing we're going to collect is just what we'll call curves underscore list for our curve list, which is our input of all our curves. And we're just going to unwrap this this element but we're going to iterate over this list so we're going to turn it back into a list again so we're just going to say list and in zero just to ensure that we're dealing with a list after we flattened it so that we can iterate again and then we're going to create 
our views from Revit. Not a view, sorry, a level from Revit. Uh, actually, we could we could work with our active view. Let's let's do that instead. It's probably more interesting. So what we'll do is we'll just base it on the fact that we're currently in a view. That's probably more likely how we typically be working with this workflow. So I'll just get a current document node in Dynamo. And I'll get the active view of that document. And we'll use this instead of our level. So we'll get the level of the view. So we'll show you an extra method you can use. Teaches you a bit more. Okay, so let's just run so that we can get our view and get started. This is probably better as well because it makes sure that the user is specifying that they're working with an area plan. Um, otherwise, you'd be in a non-area view which can't support area boundary lines. Okay, so instead we'll just say that view underscore r for Revit is unwrap element and we'll do in one. So we're just taking our view from Dynamo and passing it into an unwrapped element that we can work with in Revit. So we're going to be doing a transaction um, for a majority of this script. So I'm just going to encapsulate everything we do within the transaction manager to ensure that we have the priority and the queue when we do this. Um, so in this case, the first thing we need to do is actually get our level um, from, from our view. So we're going to say level underscore R for Revit. And we're going to say from our Revit view, we want to get its level. So if I go to the view class, in API docs, we should be able to find that property. It'll be a property of the view class. So we'll go view class, view properties, and there we go, here's this gen level. So the level for this view, so we use gen level in order to get that level. So now we have the level, but we need the level's ID. So we're gonna say in this case, level i equals and we'll say level underscore Revit dot ID. So this will be the ID of that level of the view. Now we can define a sketch plane using the Revit API. So we'll just say plane underscore R for Revit. And we'll just say sketch plane dot create. So we're taking that creation method and we'll go doc for our active document. And then we'll just take that level ID. So now we should have a sketch plane that we can place our area lines at in Revit using the Revit API. In this case, I'll just, again, make my output just one so I can keep working without that. And I'll just double check. It looks like I've maybe mistyped something. Name view is not defined. Ah, I need to do view underscore r, not dot r. There we go. So now we have a sketch plane we can work with that we're temporarily creating in Revit. What we're going to do now is actually generate our, gener uh, our area lines. So we're going to do a majority of our script now. So we're going to go, we're going to say that our boundaries are an empty list for now, because we're going to pass our area boundary lines out at the end through Dynamo, so we can keep working with them as Dynamo elements as well. That's a really common thing that's good to do, um, so that the node doesn't become a dead end in Dynamo. So we're going to say four curves in curves list. So we're saying for each curve, in that flattened list, we want to do something. First thing we're going to do is just say that the boundary or the curve that we're getting back in in uh, Dynamo, it's going to be, is again empty. We're going to say for curve in curves, and we're going to say that we're just going to define a local curve variable, and we're going to say that we're going to convert our curve to Revit type. So this is sort of like the opposite of generating a prototype. So now we're generating an element in Revit geometry um, based on the Dynamo geometry. So we're going the other way, unlike our last video where we converted to a prototype in Dynamo to get our boundary line instead. Then we're gonna generate our area line, but we're gonna set it to a variable. And the reason we're gonna do this is so we can collect them, convert them back to Dynamo and pass them through our node. So in this case, this will be a creation method. So we're creating and defining a variable at the same time. So we're gonna say doc, active document we're going to use the create method um, and this is where we're going to call on that new area boundary line and we need those three variables now so you recall um, I'll just go back to the Revit API docs and go new area boundary line method and you remember we need a sketch plane we need a curve and we need a view 
So I guess this is probably why it's actually better to collect the view rather than the level for this node as well, because we actually need the view as well. Okay, so we're gonna take that plane that we made. So plane underscore R, which is this sketch plane that we've made in our transaction. We're then gonna take our curve that belongs to our curves list, essentially, um, which we've converted to Revit already. So we're taking a Revit curve that we've generated. And then we're gonna take our view, which we've unwrapped at the start. We're then gonna append this element um, but first we need to convert it back to a dynamo element using the two DS type method that we've used a few times in other videos. So we're going to say to boundary, we want to append this element. So we're going to take line, but we're going to use the two DS type method. I'm going to say false because it has been created during the session. It's not um, something that was pre-existing. Um, so in this case, we're then going to append that back. So I think I think I'm probably sitting at the wrong level. I think, yeah, that's where I need to be. It needs to be sitting within the for loop. And then outside, once the for loop is finished, we're gonna take bound in this case, or bounds, so our list from back here. And we're gonna append our bound element to it. So in this case, this is the boundary line as a dynamo element. And then we finish our transaction by telling it that the transaction is done. And then our out, in this case, will be our dynamo boundary lines, so bounds. So uh, I wasn't running that in steps just because this is a creation node. It creates the elements once you run it. So if I kept running it, I'd generate multiple sets of area boundary lines. But we should expect to see that we'll get some area boundary lines generated here and then passed back to a dynamo element and appended to a list that passes through. So what I'll do is just save and I'll run this, but I might just sort of isolate so you can see this thing get created and hopefully it works. In this case, it looks like I might have kept some boundary lines from another run. No, I haven't. Okay, so what I'll do is just create an area boundary line just so I can isolate category. Okay, now I have kept another set by the looks of it. Oh no, these are just the lines from Dynamo itself. So what I'll do, I've hidden this, I'll just hide these as well. Okay, so now we want to run this. I should just see them show up, hopefully. Uh, I'll just try and get that run button. Cool. There we go. So when I run it, you can see it's created the curves in Revit as area boundary lines, but in the out variable, we're also passing these area boundaries as model curves through to the next step. So if you did want to do something with these, like measure their length, for example, as a model curve in Dynamo, you could now. So this is sort of a, a, a pass-through method that lets you carry data beyond into Dynamo as well, which is really important to do so that you don't sort of dead end yourself. Uh, but that's essentially the, the workflow to generate lines. So we've sort of shown how to generate some elements in Revit itself, um, as well as use some Dynamo geometry to define some Revit geometry to guide the creation process. Um, so quite a helpful little workflow um, that probably has a lot of different applications. Okay, so that's part two. Um, so we're going to be finishing this little three-part API example up in the next video. And this one's going to be quite handy because we're going to be using our rooms on that level to generate areas on that level and then pass a few properties between them. So we're going to set the area's name and the number using the room's name and number. So we'll show you how to sort of transpose some properties. Um, and then beyond there, I'll probably look at some more basic examples and then we'll jump into filtered element collectors, which I've sort of been putting off. Um, just a reminder, this, this node is actually available um, in my custom package already on Crumple. So if I just take that away and then I just search through Crumple, I think it's under Revit areas, which I might move to Revit elements eventually. Um, we've got area lines from curves and I can just move this view up here. Just undo in Revit, take my view, my curves and run. And it's essentially the same thing just packaged into a custom node. So quite a handy little thing and a little trick that I've used in here actually that I probably should show you is that I've actually called on some design script to say that if the user doesn't specify the view that um, you're setting, it just by default gives you the current active view in Revit. So that can be quite handy when the user can't be bothered setting up a, a active view node. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and I think I found those just by highlighting these two nodes and going node to code and just sort of finding that that syntax that exists okay anyway so that's um that's all for this video if you're not already following and subscribing 
uh, feel free to do so. I make videos twice a week or try to and aim to do so for a while. So thanks for watching today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.